Hello and welcome back to another YouTube video. Hi, I'm Speeder. Okay, so today I will be recommending books for you guys. Uh, I thought since school's starting, I might do a little bit more of an educational video. Uh, just with some books that I would recommend. Some of these are books that you have, might have read. Some of them are more popular, some of them are less popular. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, let me just explain real quick how this works. So I have three sections. Um, I have the first section, um, is Magic Fantasy for Teens. So this one is more like tweens, teens, maybe some of them are a little bit young adult. Um, you could say they fit into the, mostly teens would read them. Uh, but adults can also enjoy them and so can kids. Um, and then the second one is more of a geared toward young adult and adult fantasy, um, that still has that more of a magic element, uh, or power element or something, something not really of this world. Uh, and then the final section, which is the small section, is one that doesn't, they do have, they might have some like hints at magic stuff in them, but therefore any age really, but the ones that I have down here are more young adult to late teen or like teen to young adult. Uh, and they don't really have a huge magic aspect or power aspect, but they do have, but they are great adventure books. So yeah, so I'm just gonna go over books from all the sections. I have most of them here. I own most of them. Uh, however, or my family owns most of them, and I own some of them. Um, however, there are some that I do not have. Uh, let's see how many are there that I don't have. Let's see, one, two. I think I'm only missing two. I mean, no, three. I'm missing three of them. So I believe I am missing three. I may be wrong on that. Uh, but all the rest of the ones I have. So that's great. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. Let's go. Uh, don't wanna make it too long of an intro, even though it's already, like, been two and a half minutes. But yeah. Okay, uh, so let's just get started. Uh, first of all, in the teen to kid to young adult range, like, pretty much anybody, uh, we have one that most people have read, and if you haven't, that's okay, but you probably have read, and that is... Harry Potter. I recommend the series uh, quite a lot. It is my third favorite series of all time. As of right now, I would need to make a relist next year, which I've talked about uh, before. I wanted every two years, uh, assuming I do YouTube for that long, which I might want to. But yeah, um, I want to make a redo of my top 10 because I don't want to really do it yearly. But, um, I think a redo is in order every, like, two years, because opinions change. But Harry Potter is a very good series. There are quite a few flaws, uh, I have to say. But, um, overall, I think it's a great series, especially for, um, not, not, not necessarily early readers, but, like, um, I definitely wouldn't say for early readers. But people who are, like, in their early te teens, uh, I think would most enjoy it. Um, especially people who are around the age of maybe 14 or 13, uh, maybe 15 or 12. Between, probably between the ages of, like, 11 and 16, around those ages, would understand it and relate to the characters most. Uh, because throughout the series, you have Harry growing up from 11 to 17. Well, technically, at the very, very beginning, he's 10, but then he turns 11 in the first book very early on. So, basically, it's him going from 11 to 17, but it's also technically him going from 10 to 17. But, we, yeah. Anyways, um, let's not get confusing. If you don't know what Harry Potter is, for some reason, which, that's fine. Um, basically, you follow a young wizard named Harry Potter. Um, 
and he has a mortal enemy um, who most people don't like to speak his name and he goes to a magic school and tries to defeat his mortal enemy basically it's a really good series um, it's by JK Rowling um, so yeah uh, definitely recommend it <coughs> oh gosh one moment I have some tissues back here Okay, and we're back. Okay, so Harry Potter is a different recommend for me. Mostly for ages 11 to 17, or sorry, 11 to 16. I'm not sure about 17, but yeah, most people can enjoy it um, quite a bit. I have read this series many times. All right, so let's move on to the second one, another one that a lot of people have probably read. Um, I brought a book from the sequel, because uh, it's the one I own, personally, and that is Percy Jackson. This is from Heroes of Olympus, which is the sequel series to Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and the Olympians but I would definitely recommend both. I'm not sure about Trials of Apollo yet, because I have not read it. I'm currently on the last book of the Heroes of Olympus. I have it upstairs. Uh, it's called Blood of Olympus, and I'm about halfway through. I'm just barely, actually, I'm over halfway through by like a few pages. I read a lot today. Um, but yeah. So, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Uh, the premise of it is if you don't know about it, you follow a teenager uh, named Percy Jackson, who early on he discovers that he is a demigod. So, his father was a god, and his mother is. A mortal woman, um, and basically he goes to this super secret camp called Camp Half Blood, and I guess it's kind of secret. It's secret to mortals. Mortals can't go in there, but he goes to this place called Camp Half Blood, where he meets some friends, and he goes on a lot of adventures, also trying to defeat um, a very powerful being um, who is trying to basically take over the world. So, yeah, it's another one of those. Uh, this is my tenth favorite book at the moment, uh, but I would definitely still recommend it, especially the first series I would recommend for people maybe between the ages of nine to probably, like, fifteen. Would maybe... Uh, no, nine to, like, seventeen, probably. It's m more arranged for relating. Uh, but the second series... Uh, Heroes of Olympus, I would recommend more for the age group of 14 or 13 to maybe 20. It's more grown up than the original series, mostly because the characters have grown up. Um, it's not like super grown up, but like it, it is a more of a young adult book uh, in the Heroes of Olympus. But the first series I would definitely recommend for um, younger people. So, yeah, it's it's a really good series. Uh, I quite enjoy it. Uh, the first series gives me a lot of nostalgia, and I very, very much enjoy the second series. So, yeah. Um, we'll see how I feel about Trial of Follow when I read that. So, yeah, definitely recommend Percy Jackson and the Olympians and Percy Jackson Heroes of Olympus. Okay, so now we go to the next one, uh, which is my f all time favorite series. Keep It The Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. Okay, so this is an incomplete series. So if you're not into that, you can wait a couple of years. It'll probably be out. Book 9 uh, will come out next year in 2022. Uh, we all thought it was going to come out in 2021, but as far as I know, it is coming out in 2022. We still don't have a name or a cover or anything. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so we have had 9 books. Uh, but the, l the latest one is called Book 8.5 uh, because it's more of a novella. I don't know if I, that's how you pronounce that, but it's it's a novella uh, with a bunch of bonus content. 
um, and just like stuff about the world and the characters and the species and stuff. Keeper is my all-time favorite series. I love it. Uh, it's less known than Harry Potter and Percy Jackson, but it is still a decently well-known series. So, I feel like it's become more well-known in the more recent years. So, premise of this one, you follow a young girl named Sophie Foster, and she very early on discovers that she is not human. Um, but she grew up as a human. In fact, she is an elf. This series very much reminds me of Harry Potter <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, so she goes to the elven world, uh, meets friends, goes to a school where she learns how to use her abilities. Let's see. <laughs> It's basically Harry Potter, but also not Harry Potter. It's better than Harry Potter, in my opinion. Um, and she has to fight off um, a mysterious force kind of thing um, who are trying to do a lot of bad things, basically. I don't, it's a bad way to explain it. But uh, there's a lot of mystery around it. She's constantly... <clears throat> oblivious to what is going on around her. Those of you who have read Keeper know exactly what I meant by saying that. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. It is my favorite series as of yet. Um, I love Sophie. I love the friends that she makes along the way. Specifically one friend. Um, who is awesome. And, honestly, overall, it's a great series so far, and I'm very much excited to see where it goes. And, know that when you read this, you will dislike Shannon Messenger for cliffhangers, like most authors. So, warning there. But that's all I'm going to say, because if I keep talking, I'm going to spoil it, for those of you who haven't read it. Okay. So, the next one on the list, I do not have with me. Is one of the ones that I do not own, and it's one of the ones that I have not read in several years. And it's called Janitors by um, Tyler Whitesides, I think. Is that how you say that? Um, so, Janitors, I don't remember a lot about it. Honestly, I don't really remember anything. Um, but I, I did finish it in like the third grade, uh, it was a while ago. But I have to say, I would recommend it. Uh, I remember very much enjoying it, and I remember some of it. I remember, like, a few scenes from it, but I don't know. I would check it out if I were you. I very much enjoyed it. Um, I would definitely recommend it for people from the age group of maybe, like, uh, 9 to, like, from what I can remember, maybe to, like, 14 or 15. Um, I don't really remember a ton about it, so I can't really say anything else than that, except for the fact that I do recommend it, because I did very much enjoy it when I did read it. It was a good series. I liked it. So, now we move on to the final one in this section, and that is... Unwanted, slash Unwanted Quests. So, uh, this series is very good. Um... Even on the back of this book, it says The Hunger Games meets Harry Potter, which is, is kind of accurate. It's accurate for the first book. It, it is another one that uh, is very similar to Harry Potter, um, but also not. But also, yeah. <laughs> so, you follow um, several people in this one, but technically the main character, his name is Alex. Um... Alex Stowe, or however you want to say it. I say Alex Stowe um, and his brother Aaron, uh, but technically Alex is the main character. Uh, you also have other characters that appear, but yeah, Alex is technically the main character. So, you follow them, and at the beginning of the books, Alex is going to be a part of this thing called the Purge, um, which is people uh, that are creative and have ideas and don't strictly follow the order of this land called Quill, um, are 
spoiled alive. Yeah. But it turns out that that's actually not what happens. So creative people that are sent here called unwanted, when they're brought to this lake, they are transferred into a different land. Um, to a place called Artebe. So, it's like this magic land that exists just outside of Quill, and no one who is not an unwanted knows about it. And Alex goes there, and he starts learning at this school-ish place, which is also like a sanctuary, uh, while trying to not be discovered by the people of Quill. So, yeah, um, that's basically all I have to say on that one, without spoiling it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really good series, it's one of my favorites, I don't remember which place I put it at specifically, I think it was like number six, um, or number seven. One of the two. I think it was number six though. But, yeah. Um, I just remember that I forgot to add one to the list. Uh, so I own that one, but it's not going to be down here because I forgot about it and I just remembered it. So one second, let me write that down so I don't forget. I do own that one, the one that I'm writing down, but like I said, I'm not going to be able to show it to you because I just remembered it. Okay, so now let's move on to the next section, which is more for older teens, young adults, adults. So, first of all, one that I would recommend uh, is one that I have not quite finished yet, um, because the fourth book of it came out recently, and I've been rereading it, which is why I have this. And this is um, The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, this is book two right here that I have for Words of Radiance. If you are very into reading and love reading very long books with a lot of detail in them, um, all of the Wave King's books, as far as I know, are over 1,000 pages. This one, in and of itself, is uh, of the actual pages, is 1,080 pages. And. The writing is very small, so and the pages are very big. So, yeah, it is a very long, very detailed book. Uh, but it is my one of my top favorite series. It's I think number eight or nine. I think it's number eight. Um, it is very good. Uh, it does take a while. Um, I am a very, very into books reader. I love reading. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, obviously I started the channel around books, so obviously I love books. And the first book took me two weeks. And usually books don't take me that long. Um, usually they take me more like four days if I'm reading them a lot. Um, and I was reading it a lot. This one right here uh, took me about three weeks, and the third book took me about a month. So, yeah, it, it was like a week longer each time, um, just because each one had more to take in. It is such a vast world that Brandon Sanderson has created with this series, uh, with so many characters and situations, and they have politics in it, and religion, and... But they, they don't make a huge deal about it, but they do, but it's just, it's, it's so interesting how realistic he can make a world seem, even if it has a magic system in it. And Brandon Sanders is a, is a phenomenal author. You can see how phenomenal he is if you go watch my top five favorite authors video, because he is definitely on that list. Um, Brandon Sanderson just has a really good way of world build. Uh, he, he's really great at world building. That's, I think, one of his big strengths as a writer is world building. Um, as far as the books by him that I've read, which I have read 
this one, uh, the first book of Mistborn, Elantris, and the Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarian series. Which, oh my gosh, I forgot about that one. I wrote it down, and I accidentally missed it. So yeah, definitely recommend this one. I'm gonna go back to Alcatraz in a second. Um, but yeah, basically, you follow mostly uh, four or five characters. So you follow, for the most part, five characters. And those are Kaladin, or Kaladin, or however you want to say it, Kaladin, uh, Shallan, or Shallan, I've heard all sorts of different pronunciations. Uh, so, the way I say them, Kaladin, Shallan, Dalinar, um, Adeline, and Zeph. So, you follow these five characters, um, mostly Kaladin, Shallan, and Dalinar. And they're out in the world doing different things. So, in the first book, Kaladin is a slave who used to be a part of the army of a guy named Amaram. And he's now a slave, and you don't know why at this point. Um, and he is being signed to Bridge Crews, uh, specifically Bridge 4. So that's what Kaladin's doing, and he must use the situation that he is in and be able to get out of the situation and possibly help some people along the way. Shalon is desperate. She is wanting to be a scholar, but she is also worried about her house. Um, because the house of Devar is struggling for some reason. So Shalon must do something about it, so she goes to um, the, one of the most famous scholars, uh, if not the most famous scholar ever, uh, Jocelyn Cullen, who's actually, um, I think it's Dalinar's niece? I think it's Dalinar's niece. Um, and Shalon goes to her for something, which I will not tell you what it is. Um, so, yeah. And she must struggle between different moral decisions and also what she wants. So, yeah. Zeth is an assassin. He cannot do anything about it, um, as far as you know. And he must obey the every command of his masters. Um, whoever holds his right, basically, who, whoever owns him, he must obey everything that they say. He doesn't want to, but he does. Um, so he's the reluctant assassin, and in the prologue of the book, he does something that affects the entire series, and you see him being passed from hand to hand. So, yeah. Um, and Adeline, sorry, let's, let's start with Dalinar. Dalinar is a high prince of this kingdom. Um, and Roshar. He's a high, is it Roshar? Yeah, he's a high, he's a high prince in, in, um, it's on Roshar, but it's in... Alethgar. So he's a high prince of a left car, and he's the uncle to the king, and brother to the former king, Gavilar. Um, and he is having something very strange happen to him. He's having visions uh, during these things called high storms, and he must figure out what his visions mean, um, and why they're happening, and then try to help as best he can. So eventually, when Adeline is Dalinar's son and is not really very important in the first book. Uh, but yeah, so all of these people must eventually end up together and fight um, a greater evil. So yeah, it's a really great series um, with, I think, a lot of a yeah, huge world uh, that is very much explored. And I really, really love this series, and if you're into that kind of thing, the really long, detailed things, it's it's not really like Lord of the Rings. There's another one on this list that's more like Lord of the Rings, but, like, it's kind of, but also no, it's, it's not. Actually, never mind, I take that back. But, yeah, 
is just long. It's not really drawn out because a lot of stuff happens in it, but it's long and very detailed, and it's great. So yeah, it's from my archive. Definitely recommend. Um, I would more recommend it for a slightly older audience. Uh, it is found in the adult section of most libraries. Um, but I would recommend it for people between the ages of maybe 15 or 16 to any age for an adult. Um, so, yeah. The youngest I would read it at is 16. Um, or have your parents' permission first to read it. If you're younger than that. So, yeah. Um, let's see. The next one on this list is the one that I was... Oh, wait, I was going to talk about Alcatraz. Okay, I forgot one from the previous section. Um, because I wrote it on the side afterwards. Um, and that is... I have actually the entire series in one book right here. Um, technically it's not a finished one because apparently there's going to be a book six. But this is Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians by Brandon Sanderson. This is a wonderfully hilarious book. So, it's it's been a couple years since I read this one, but I do remember some things. So you follow this guy named Alcatraz Smedry. And there's something about the Smedries that you need to know. Um, and that is they have these things called talents, but they're not just regular old talents. They do things, like more than regular talents. They have power. And... Um, Alcatraz's talent is the most powerful talent, and that is the talent of breaking things. It is an incredibly powerful talent, um, and he's very, very good at it. Um, it's very hilarious. It was the series that Brandon Sanderson wrote while he was writing Mistborn as basically a coping mechanism, if I remember correctly. So he is totally random, and, um, it just, it's, it's really funny. It has weird chapter names, it's got weird stuff in between. Some of them, if you get, like, the normal copies, have, like, comments on the side um, that will like be also very funny like what do you call them uh, I don't remember what they're called but they're they're like on the side they're basically author's notes but they're not author's notes because they're part of the book um, and they get more and more random but also better and better each time. So like here you have chapter 12 of book 1 and what is the next chapter? Oh no, that's not book 1. Wait, let me find one that actually does that. Um, here, let's go to the last book. Oh yes. Here is a uh, from one of the last books. I don't know if it's the last book, last book. But this chapter name is and it's not a name, it's a number. It's just chapter 070706. And the next one is, uh, chapter 6.022141179 times 10 to the 23rd power. And of course, you have the classic gigantic text on the page. Um, in random places. Hey, you wake up. So yeah, it is very hilarious, very random, but it also still has a great plot. So yeah, I would definitely check this one out. I would recommend it for a variety of ages. I think almost anybody can enjoy it, though I would be at least maybe like nine or ten uh, to be able to actually understand what's going on. Um, I know eight-year-olds can read if they put their minds to it. I did. I have been into books since before I was three. I told stories by looking at... I did not look at picture books. Like, I did, but, like, not as often as most kids would. I read Magic Treehouse books. 
when I was like three and two and stuff. I didn't actually read them, obviously, because obviously I don't know how to. I, I didn't know how to, but um, why did that just suddenly get darker? I'm gonna put this Alcatraz book under here now. Okay, it's a little bit taller now. But anyways, um, yeah. Alcatraz is a great series. Who I would recommend to most ages, if not all that can read. It's a great series. So yeah, if you're looking for comedy and maybe a coping mechanism or something, Alcatraz is definitely the way to go. Okay, so back to that more young adult to adult stuff. Um, yeah, the next one. Uh, I wish I could reach back here real quick. And that is Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and later on by Brandon Sanderson. I have not read uh, to the Brandon Sanderson books yet. Um, I am on book six. This is book nine, because uh, it's the one I own. Um, but yeah, I'm on Lord of Chaos. And the names of them are The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, The Dragon Reborn, The Shadow Rising, The Fires of Heaven, Lord of Chaos, Crown of Swords, Path of Daggers, Winter's Hearts, which is this one, Crossroads of Twilight, Knife of Dreams, The Gathering Storm, Towers of Midnight, Memory of Light. So there are 14 books. Um, I believe the last three are by Brandon Sanderson, because Rob Jordan died in 2007, and passed on the series to Brandon Sanderson. So, yeah. Um, and, I don't know. It's it's overall a really good series so far. I have not finished it, but I would still definitely recommend it. It is one that I would be 15 or 16 um, before you read it, or... Or maybe 16. I would say 16 for this one. Be 16 or have your parents' permission uh, to read this one. It's definitely in the adult section, and it's in the adult section for a reason. Um, I'm not an adult, but I have my parents' permission uh, to read this series. And it's actually really good. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend it um, as long as you're 16 and up or you have your parents' permission. So... Yeah. Um, basically, you follow a variety of characters. It's a very Lord of the Rings kind of thing. Um, at least the first book is Eye of the World. Um, basically, you go walking, 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 do something. Walking, 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 do something. Walking, 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 do something. It's one of those... But it's better. I have not actually read all of Lord of the Rings, which I regret, but I will in the future. Uh, I've just never really been into that until more recently. Um, I am. I have read The Hobbit. That was an interesting one. It took a while. Um, I, actually, yeah, The Hobbit was read to me by my dad, I think, um, a while back. So yeah, I've had the. I've never actually read The Hobbit, like read it, read it, but I've had it read to me. So yeah. And I've seen all of the Lord of the Rings movies, but I have not read the books. Um, so, um, yeah, so you follow a troop of characters. So the ones in the first book that you really start to follow are, first of all, Rand Althor, who's kind of like the main character. You might look, if you're scrolling through my channel, I've done um, plenty of book talks, like main character book talks, and just character book talks overall, um, on a lot of Wheel of Time characters, um, which I probably should have waited to do <laughs> until I'd finished the series, but I did it anyway, um, but yeah, Rand is one of the characters you follow, and he's kind of like the main character, and you have Paranibera, Matt Coffin, um, and Gween, and Nynaeve. Yes, I pronounce them that way. Um, I believe it's Win Almera and then Anive Alvera or something. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's if you like Lord of the Rings, you'll like Wheel of Time. That's all I really have to say. So yeah, it's a great series. I like it so far. But yeah, uh, let's move on. 
uh, to the next one, which is one I recently read. So if you're not looking for a series and you're looking for a standalone, um, then I would recommend Storm Thief by Chris Wooding. Uh, this is one that I would recommend for teens um, and young adults. I don't think kids would fully get it. Uh, but it is a standalone by Chris Wooding, who I think normally writes horror. I don't remember. But yeah, this one isn't a horror. It's basically an adventure. Um, and you follow um, three characters. Um, for the most part, you you do get some perspective from other characters. But your three main ones, um, you have... Crap, what's... Oh, no. Yeah, Rail and Moa. Moa? Is it? I think it's Rail and Moa. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I know one of them is named Rail. And he's the boy. Is it Moa? That doesn't sound quite right. Rail! And, yeah, let's just go with it. Moa. I may be butchering that name because I don't remember exactly, um, even though it's only been a few weeks since I read that. Um, and then you follow this Gollum thing. Um, not like Gollum from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but it's a Gollum. Um, who for some reason I am forgetting the name of again. But, uh, yeah. So, you, Rail and Moa are thieves, um, who are basically living in the slums of the city called, oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue, in this city. Uh, so they're thieves in this city, um, and there are these things going on called reality storms. So, Reality Storms um, happen quite often, and they ripple throughout the city, and anything that's hit by it, um, whatsoever, could have the potential to be changed to any kind of reality. So, it changes anything. It can rearrange buildings, it can take away your ability to breathe, it can change your eye color, it can move your hands, your dominant hand from left to right, or right to left. It can do anything. There, there is no limit to its possibility. And Rail was affected by this. Uh, Moa was minorly, but mostly Rail. Rail has lost his ability to breathe, so he has to wear a respirator all the time. Um, which also left him in the debt of this mistress thief, basically. I, I don't know how she would say that. I don't remember her official title. Uh, but she's she's like the boss of the thieves, basically. And the real Noah aren't her favorite thieves. Um, she, she likes them uh, overall. This is getting to be a rather long video. But anyways, um... So, yeah. Um, so, Rail and Noah decide to escape from this life of thievery and go make themselves a better life. And how they do that is with a special device that they discover on one of their thieving expeditions. So, they must figure out how to make a better life for themselves in a city that most people think is the only thing in the world. So yeah, that's Storm Thief by Chris Wooding. It's really good. I really liked it. But yeah. And let's move on to the last one in this section, and that is a wonderful series, which is my number four, Michael Bay. This is book one, The Prisoner of Cell 25. So you follow uh, several characters, but for the most part, you follow this guy named Michael. Uh, Michael Vay, obviously. 
Um, and Michael Day, along with several other people, many, well, not many, but several other people, um, at birth, were, had a situation that happened. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember it was at birth. Uh, something happened in the hospitals to each of these kids. And, by the way, they're from Meridian, Idaho, which I... I have driven by Meridian, Idaho many times, and I really want to visit it, but it's always been on road trips, because um, I, I don't live in Idaho, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's always been on, on road trips, and we've never really fully stopped there. Um, we were going to several times, but each time we were like, eh, we're going somewhere, so yeah, um, we go on long time road trips all the time. I think the longest road trip I've been on is like 16 hours driving? Was it? I don't remember. But yeah, that, that was more recently. But yeah, I've, I've driven through Idaho a few times. Um, and I've, always, I've often passed by Meridian. Um, and this is, that's where this book takes place, so I really want to stop there. Uh, I also want to reread the series so that I remember everything. But, yeah, I believe it's seven books long? Is it? Um, hmm. Okay, by the way, it's by Richard Paul Evans. Um, but, yeah. Um... So you follow Michael Day, and he has, from birth, because of this accident, or was it an accident, uh, that happened in the hospitals, um, he has electric powers, and he has some of the more, um, one of the more, like, uh, powerful ones. So... Um... I don't remember what exactly what his power was. Um, but I know he has one of the more powerful ones. Uh, I believe... I want to say... He can actually use his electricity. But there was another person who could do that, so could he? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm pretty sure he can actually use his electricity um, as, like, an attack. Um, so, like, he can basically shoot it. I don't remember exactly what his power was. Uh, and, come on. Uh, but Michael, I believe, also has Tourette's syndrome. Um, so that makes life a little bit more difficult for him. Um, but he, I believe, it is related to his electric powers and how powerful they are, which caused him to have that. Um, but yeah, so he's a kid with lightning powers um, who meets other kids with lightning powers and must stop one of the most evil people I have ever seen in a book besides like maybe Umbridge I hate him um, and so he must stop him with the help of some of his friends who have electric powers and some who don't and they are called the electric clan so yeah that's it. 
that I really have to say at the moment. Um, I feel bad that I don't remember exactly what his power is. I'll have to look it up later. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Alright, so this next section is the shortest one. Um, and it's got three series in it. Uh, one of them I do own, but I wrote it down at the last second, and so therefore I do not have it down here with me. Um, but, well, I don't own it, but my family does. It's one of those ones. Um, but, yeah. So, this is the realistic fiction section. Technically, um, these do have... One of them may have magic in it, but I don't remember it having that. My sister says it does, but I don't remember it having it. I remember that it had, like, false magic in it, but no real magic in it, so I'm just going to count it here. Uh, though I may be wrong, and if I am, I'm sorry. But, uh, that one, and the first one on this list, um, which I need to move a bunch of stuff to grab, um, is my second favorite series of all time, Ranger's Apprentice. Okay, so, Ranger's Apprentice, you follow your main character, Will. He doesn't have a last name, he's just Will. Um, and... Will is... kind of talentless to a lot of people's understanding. He doesn't seem to have any of the regular talents that would get him into a certain into certain professions. Especially his wanted profession, which is he wants to be uh, a part of battle school and become a knight and everything. Um, but he is very small, uh, a bit scrawny, he's short, he doesn't have... he doesn't look like a soldier, so obviously they don't select him. Uh, Minor spoiler, I guess, but not really. Um, but instead, he is chosen by the Rangers, specifically a singular ranger named Holt. And he becomes a apprentice ranger. Ranger's apprentice. Um, and what the Rangers do is they're kind of like the SWAT team. Black Ops of the military in um, in this kingdom of Erluin, and they are very very skilled with bows. Uh, this shirt that I'm wearing was custom made. Um, I think it was custom made, uh, but it's from my brother, and it has a quote on it. it says, "An ordinary archer practices until." He gets it right. Uh, a ranger practices until he never gets it wrong. And on the back I have Ranger Corpse, um, which is awesome. I love this shirt and I wear it all the time. Um, uh, but yeah, that's like the definition of the rangers is that um, they practice until they never get it wrong. They're very good at sneaking. A lot of them are very small and scrawny like Will, but they're also very strong, stronger than they look, and they're very highly trained. So, you follow Will, who is becoming a ranger and dealing with a lot of different problems with um, war and rumors of wars, I guess I should say, um, and different villains throughout the series. Um, now this series is not just Ranger's Apprentice, uh, it actually has two sequels, and, well, one sequel, one companion, and one prequel. So the prequel series is called, well, the original series is 11 books long, uh, if you count the last one as a real book, if, even though it's like a collection, book 11 is basically a collection of short stories. Um, so you have 11 books in the first series, Ranger's Apprentice, and then you have uh, two books in the prequel, which is called Early Years. Um, and then you have, I think it's three books so far? Um, or in all? 
uh, three or four books in the Royal Ranger series, which is the sequel. Um, and then you have, I think it's eight books in the Brother Band series, which is the companion series to Ranger's Apprentice. So some of it's happening at the same time, you know. So also the order I would read that in, do not read the prequel first. I swear to goodness if you read the prequel first. Oh my goodness, do not do that. Please, you will spoil so much for yourself. Read the original series first, Ranger's Apprentice. Then, so I would read the first, the way I would read it is I would read the first four books of Ranger's Apprentice, then read book seven, then five and six, then eight, nine, and ten, and eleven. And then I would read uh, the earliers. And then Brother Band, you, you just need to read Brother Band and Royal Ranger. You can read Brother Band whenever, as long as you've read book 7 of Ranger's Apprentice first. Um, you do need to read that first. So, after you finish book 7 of Ranger's Apprentice, you can read Brother Band. Um, but I would read all the other ones first, besides maybe Royal Ranger. Um, but, yeah. Royal Ranger used to be called Book 12 of Ranger's Apprentice, but it became a series most more recently. Goodness gracious, I have been going for almost an hour. Okay, let's hurry up a little bit. But yeah, Ranger's Apprentice is my second favorite series, and I love it. Definitely would recommend it, especially for people who very much enjoy long-term stories. So, yeah. Uh, this next, These next two, these last two, I do not have either of them. The last, the last one I do own. Like I said, I don't have it down here. But this next one is one of my favorites. Uh, it's not on my current top ten list, but I would probably honestly put it down there on the updated one. And that is The Ascendants. It used to be called The Ascendants Trilogy, a.k.a. False Prince. So, goodness, I love this series. It's by Jennifer Ann Nelson. Um, and you follow, uh, without any spoilers, let's just say you follow this guy named Sage. Um who is an orphan, and he is recruited by a guy named Connor, Bevan Connor, um, to act as kind of a false prince for this prince that supposedly died years ago named Jaren. And, I'm trying to make this spoiler free. But Sage is, in fact, keeping a secret, um, which I won't tell you what that secret is, but it's it's an important one. And then throughout the rest of the series, Sage uh, is fighting several different um, enemies and fighting in wars and leading wars, leading defense against wars. I can't really say much else without spoiling it, but you have your main character, Sage. Um, and that's kind of the premise for the first book, is that Sage has been recruited to become kind of a false prince, um, who would eventually become a false king. And Sage must figure out what to do in this situation. So, yeah. He's also very snarky. If you have read this, you know why I can't say anything more. Um, but yeah. Um, so let's just move on to. I think I've had my entire top. Well, most. Not my entire top 10 list on this, but most of it. Um, I didn't put one down. And this last one is Alex Ryder by Anthony Horowitz. Uh, it's a pretty long series. I think at this point it's like. Well, like, 13, 14 books? I don't remember. 12. It's between 12 and, like, 14. Somewhere in there. Unless there was a new one that came out, then maybe there's 15. I don't know. But anyways, um... You follow this kid named Alex Ryder. This teenager named Alex Ryder. Um... From England. And... He... Early on, discovers a secret about his uncle. It was kept from his uncle Ian. It was kept from him for many years. And he becomes a spy, working for 
MI6, uh, which is the English Secret Service. Um, and he goes through a lot of spy adventures where he takes down uh, new villains or old villains. Some of them last longer than others, some of them don't. It's just, it's a lot of different stories, and they're all like sci fi spy stories, and they're all really great. Uh, also, there's a new Alex Rider TV show that's coming out on Amazon Prime uh, video, but I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know if it's any good. But um, I love the series, so I would definitely go check it out. It is a bit of a long one, but it's very much enjoyable. So, yeah. That's all I really have to say. Uh, those are all my book recommendations. Going quickly back over them are Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, Keeper of the Lost Cities. Oh, sorry. Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling, Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan, Keep of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger, Janitors by Tyler Whitesides, Unwanted by Lisa McMahon, Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarians by Brandon Sanderson, Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, Storm Thief by Chris Wooding, Michael Vay by Richard Paul Evans, Rangers Apprentice by John Flanagan, The Ascendants by Jennifer A. Nelson, and Alex Ryder by Anthony Horowitz. So this was a very long video, um, but that's all I have to say, so I will see you guys next time.